we have an amazing mentor with us to take us through the session to start off the webinar series today. Uh, he is QFA's first onboarder mentor, a five-star mentor and a wonderful human being who genuinely wants to give back to the community through, through his mentorship. Uh, you can have you can get access through through uh, subscribing to www.qfirst.com. Uh, please welcome Mr. Thomas John. Uh, thank you so much for your time, uh, Thomas. Thank you so much for your time during this busy schedule. He is the founder of uh, founder and CEO of Rijola IT Services and and uh, today for the for the today's webinar exclusive webinar on elevator pitch. Uh, I would like to give on the mic to you, uh, Mr. Thomas. So I'll put my video on. Uh, 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 I'll just close my video for now so that we'll have better bandwidth. If you have any other uh, kind of presentation, you can do it yourself, or we can do it from the back end as well. Sure, sure. Thank you, Rohan, and uh, it's a privilege to be part of this. And uh, I'd like to first uh, start off thanking the entire QFIS team, NIT Trichy, and the, the organizing team of uh, Nisadya and Sankalp. Uh, it's been an amazing opportunity. Uh, I do have a presentation that I'll make, so let me share my screen. Are you able to see my uh, uh, slide completely, or is it showing the uh, is it showing the in the closed format? Are you able to see the complete slide, Mr. Rohan? Are you able to see the complete slide? Yes, 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 uh, Thomas. It's visible. Okay, so you're seeing our company logo, Rajola, right? Yeah. Oh, and pitch perform, uh, the branding and pitch perfect by Thomas Song. So yeah, the complete yeah, screen is seen. Okay, done, done. Thank you, thank you uh, very much, and uh, welcome to all the participants. It's an honor to be here, and uh, so I'll uh, get right started started with the presentation because I have prepared it in a particular flow, and uh, by the end of it, I hope uh, I will I would have answered a lot of. Uh, uh, doubts or apprehensions any of you have with respect to how to create a pitch and how to make a presentation to investors or uh, how to create a business plan also. So uh, let me start right away. So a little bit background about me. Um, I have been programming since my school days. Uh, it's been a great hobby for me to create uh, software programs. So that's what um, I've been doing. That's my uh, hobby that I have. I did my uh, uh, BE mechanical and MBA in marketing and finance. I passed out in 2004. And then I worked for seven years in three different multinationals, both in India and abroad. And uh, the company that I'm running uh, is called Rajola IT Services. So we started in 2011. So for nine years, I've been an entrepreneur. And uh, of course, it's been completely bootstrapped. I have not gone for any investments. Uh, having said that, I'll give a small uh, introduction to our company also. So Rajola was founded in 2011. We have 190 plus customers. We have presence in uh, close to 10 countries around the world as software solutions are, are being used by customers from different parts of the world. So my uh, introduction to creating business plans and uh, pitching to investors uh, started uh, you know, in 2003, uh, where when I was studying my MBA, uh, we made a presentation, me and my team, we made a presentation in uh, TFI Management Institute and we won the first prize. It was a national competition where we presented a business plan for, uh, uh, it was like a, a hospital waste management solution. Okay, so that was the business plan that we made. And so that is where my uh, journey of uh, you know, thinking of businesses, thinking of creating a, a pitch or thinking of creating a, a business plan uh, uh, you know, all that thing started um, close to uh, 18 years back, 17, 18 years back. And uh, as recent as one year back, we I had another uh, experience where uh, one of our product that we created, uh, uh, just like that, we just created a product, uh, a software solution, um, just to give it away for free. We had no intention to charge anyone uh, for that particular software product that we created. And the moment we launched that particular product, we were uh, pleasantly surprised. Two of the venture capitalist funds from India, large venture capitalist funds from India contacted us uh, wanting to uh, invest on the uh, product. So Mayfield was one venture capitalist and Matrix Partners was the other venture capitalist funds that contacted us.
and this was the product that we created autocollect.com it, it is still there it is still free it is uh, it is it is there online um, so uh, just giving you a small background about what is my personal exposure uh, with uh, uh, you know creating uh, uh, a pitch or creating a business plan or presenting to investors okay so the um, the entire format of this particular presentation uh, i have made it in a in a way that it it uh, reveals itself as a checklist uh, or you know it reveals itself as a guide so that all of you can keep your personal uh, this uh, pro business plans in mind and probably uh, have a notebook with you and just tick whether your business plan meets with what i am going to say okay so i will be i have uh, four different categories that i am going to speak about and i am going i think i'll be covering close to uh, 10 of 10 or 12 different points and i i will be talking about the importance of those points or uh, how important those points are uh, or how necessary those points are uh, you know in your business plan or in your pitch uh, so you can just go ahead and start picking whether you know you, you are covering that aspect of what i am presenting in your uh, business plan or in your uh, pitch that you are going to create so that is the format that i am following so it would benefit if you have a uh, you know a notepad and a pen with you so that you can just start you know checking the uh, uh, whether whatever i have mentioned is there in your plan or not okay so to start off uh, i have named uh, the next few slides as uh, pitch perfect priority for perfection that is what is the priority or the first thing that your uh, uh, pitch must have or your business plan must have okay so that's that's the order so what is the first one and the second one and third one of course um, it can go it, the order can change but uh, you know i feel that if you follow this particular order or if you at least if you have all these things in your business plan or in your presentation it will definitely make a difference so the first one the first thing that a uh, uh, pitch must have is a problem what i mean by that is uh, how big a problem are you trying to solve is it really a problem that is there in the world are people really struggling with this problem or are you creating a, a product or a service that does not even uh, meet any uh, problem so this is the first uh, basic thing because what happens is when there is a problem that you are trying to solve and you are trying to create a solution for that particular problem uh, which is uh, you know which people are having then the chances of your business succeeding is much higher because when you want to sell your product or service to the public to the uh, prospects they will want to buy it only if they know that some problem that they have is being solved so in your presentation or in your business plan or in your pitch that you will be creating the first and most important thing is is the problem being defined clearly in a very clear manner because if the problem is not being defined then the whole pitch itself is of no use okay so that's the first and the most important element of a pitch or a presentation that you can make problem the second most important thing that you should be uh, thinking about is the solution okay so is the problem being defined correctly and the solution being defined correctly and uh, one of the uh, winning points in this is or if you really want to make a difference what matters is whether your solution is disruptive or not because these days you see you know in the last one or two decades you see that uh, the innovations that are happening are not just small increments in innovation but uh, there is massive dis uh, disruptions happening to entire industries where uh, new products and services are coming in and they are totally different from their uh, predecessors and they are creating an entire new category of uh, uh, products or services and solutions being done so if you really if you see uh, elevator pitch is basically uh, typically people say that an elevator pitch should last for 30 seconds that is what you get okay that's the typical timing for an elevator pitch so if you have 30 seconds to make a presentation and if you want to impress an investor or a venture capitalist fund or a uh, angel investor or if if you if you have this 30 seconds these two elements are mandatory you, you need to tell the problem and you need to tell the solution the problem has to be really big literally everybody faces the problem 
and the solution preferably should be uh, a, a disruptive one. Okay. Yeah. So uh, that those are the two most important things. Now, having said this, let us see what are the next categories. So the way I have structured the entire uh, presentation is, as I said, I have grouped the different categories. So I don't know how long you would be having in your actual presentation. So uh, since I did not know the time of your actual presentation, I have grouped them in such a way that if you're given 30 seconds, you just cover these two. If you are given, let's say, two minutes or five minutes, you probably include a little more. If you are given 10 minutes, you include much more. If you're given half an hour or one hour, you go ahead and tell the whole thing. Tell the, you know, make a beautiful presentation and then you tell the whole thing. Okay, so the next one is, what has been your experience? Or what is your background? That is, uh, let's say you are extremely passionate about something. You know, a couple of you or uh, three or four of you are extremely passionate about something, and then you did some project on on that particular uh, uh, interest that you had or that passion you had, and uh, you, uh, you, without even an intention of making it into a product or a service, or without even an intention of uh, finding investors for your uh, the idea that you had you just were so involved in it you spent like six months or one year working on it and then suddenly something happened it, it turned out to be a, a beautiful product or a service and then you started pitching it to investors so what happens is when investors listen to or the uh, the panelists for example listen to your pitch with the problem and solution they are also looking at whether you really have a passion uh, you know uh, towards what you're speaking or have you really done some kind of a background or, or are you just competing for the, uh, you know, for that particular event? So they, they, they would be interested to know what is the background? How, how are the, this team of, uh, you know, uh, participants really involved in this particular project? What are they doing? Uh, what is the background they have? So they are interested in that. So if you can bring in that kind of an element in your presentation while you're speaking, it will really uh, weigh a lot. It will really help you to you know score more points next and i would say this is probably one of the most important thing uh, the team that is involved now what i mean by that is uh, the panelists the investors or the uh, or the whoever whomever you're going to present this particular uh, pitch or the presentation that you have they are looking very closely at the team at the people um, you know what happens is if there are two people presenting exactly the same idea the panelists would select the person who's got extremely high energy a great passion and if there's a synergy in the team so guys if you are part of a team and uh, if you are not enthusiastic while you are making the presentation if you're not passionate while making the presentation if you're not cheering and you know putting all your uh, best uh, in, in front of the uh, judges and panelists, you are going to find it tough to, uh, you know, uh, to make them feel that you, whatever you are doing, is uh, really valuable, or they can really bet that you know they can invest money on your, uh, on your idea or in your product and service. So, as a team, put in a lot of energy and uh, bring in a lot of passion. Uh, you know, show a lot of synergy. Practice your pitch really well. If it's a longer pitch, a 20-minute or a 30-minute pitch, uh, you know, you should almost stage manage the entire show because they are really interested to see who the team is, who are the people who are behind that particular project or the, the kind of pitch that you're going to do. Okay. Now, having said this, now the, uh, until here, you know, even as students, you will be able to uh, make a presentation. But going further down the line of checklist that uh, I have come up with, uh, it may be a little high level checklist that it might, uh, it might um, uh, not be applicable for students. But uh, if you can really research on whatever I'm going to tell from here, and if you can really read a lot of content and come up with all these points also in your pitch, it can make a major difference. So let me cover, let me tell what they are competition okay do you know existing solutions well what i mean by that is uh, when you are uh, making a presentation or a pitch to the investors or the panelists um, 
you should not be giving a solution that is already existing somewhere you should not repeat the same thing again now that can happen if you do not know what is there in the market if you do not know what is there in, uh, as a competition or what are the solutions that are already there so what that basically means is you have to do a lot of homework you have to do a lot of research to understand that the solution that you are coming up with is unique okay so this is very very important if you don't take care of this solution the panelists will listen to you but you know they say yeah this is already there this particular uh, solution is already there so what is that unique about these guys so that's one thing that you will have to be very clear about so in your presentation you can even include uh, you know something about competition that this is what the competition does but this is what we are going to do and this is the benefit that we are going to get or this is the problems that the competition has or this is how they are not able to solve the uh, you know the, the problems that the customers have uh, but however in our case we are able to solve this because of this advancement or something like that so comp uh, mentioning competition and giving a clear differentiation about your product and service can be a big uh, you know point gaining aspect for you so the next one is again this is uh, you know something probably beyond uh, uh, some uh, you know common small presentation this is for a little larger presentation that you are able to talk about the financials of the entire project or the business plan that is you are able to tell about the uh, cost of the product or service you are able to tell about the revenues you are able to tell about the uh, operational profits you are able to give a complete financial statement okay a, a, a simple projection of a financial statement now you might say but i am not a finance uh, background person so how do i do that you will have to do the research and you will have to give in some numbers uh, that give the uh, panelists or the investors confidence that okay this guy also not only knows about the technology side of it or the product and service side of it the operational side of it they also know a little bit about the financials of the whole project so including this element if you have a lot of time can bring in a lot of points for you okay next now this is uh, for those who are really serious about um, you know getting investors or uh, a team who uh, can really land with some investments the the final phase you can see three four different colors that i have put now we have come to the final phase of uh, checklist items that you can have in your pitch or in your presentation do you have a prototype okay or a proof of concept now what happens when the real world when uh, the investors are uh, looking uh, you know to find a project where they can put in a lot of money because they ultimately they need returns so they are, what they look for is a prototype so that so that is why when we created the product called autocollect.com two of the venture capitalist funds they themselves contacted us by just finding us on google is is because they saw that there was some kind of a prototype already created autocollect.com was there all the features were listed there so they felt that you know maybe these guys are ready with something and probably they are looking for investment so let us go approach them so we did not approach investors they came to us so creating a working prototype even if it's a very preliminary one it can be a major point gainer uh, if you have enough time in your presentation if you have like 30 minutes or 45 minutes and if you can do a demo of your prototype that will be amazing for your uh, you know pitch or your presentation next um of course again this is a final category how much of investment do you need i do not know whether in your um, event there is a need for you to tell about you know you are looking for 1 crore or 10 lakhs or whatever amount i'm not sure but investors uh, do want to know how much money do you want if, if, you, if that is the approach that is there so that those also come uh, as part of your presentation and of course investors are also very interested to find out what kind of a returns would can they expect okay so uh, if they invest 1 crore in a matter of 3 or 4 years how much money would they get back so that's also something that uh, investors are very much interested to listen to but as i said it all depends on how long your presentation is allowed to be if it's like a short one probably you can skip few of them towards the end uh, as i said this is i i have tried my best to uh, rate this under priority from high priority to low priority based on the time that you have uh, so returns also something they are very much interested in like if you can tell them you will get 
fifty uh, percent return in a matter of uh, one year, or you know, hundred percentage return in a matter of uh, two, three years, or four years, they would be really interested. And with a prototype, imagine you have a prototype, you already have some test customers, and they've given good reviews, and you're also promising them that you'll give so much of returns, and that's the best thing investors really want to hear. Final thing, which uh, according to me, uh, the most important thing also, which an investor, especially large investors are very interested in is, is your entire business model scalable? That is, can they take the entire business model to every part of the world and, you know, not make it a regional or a, you know, a state or a, a country, but take it to the whole globe? Because obviously that's when you can cater to the 7.5 billion people in the world and then you can make most returns. So this is what, uh, you know, few of the things that the investors or the panelists who are listening to pitch or who are listening to business plans are looking for from uh, the team members, from the presentation. So as I said, um, if you have, if you had your uh, notepad and your pen, and your business plan was with you or your idea was with you, I hope you've made think that, okay, I, I think we have a strong problem and our solution is good, uh, but maybe we do not have much of a experience, so probably we'll have to read a lot. As a team, we are great. We, we, we have done a great job. We have great energy, great enthusiasm, but I don't think we know much about the competition, so probably we need to read more about the competition. Projections, yeah, maybe we know a little bit, not much. So I, I hope you have done that kind of an analysis as I was going through all these points and um, you do have questions so we can take questions. Uh, I think I kept it very short so probably we can cover more time with questions. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Thomas. So I, I, I have been uh, taking in account all the questions that's coming in the chat box. Yeah. So, uh, people, uh, you can also please go ahead. Whoever has questions, please uh, post it in the chat box. I'll take it up with Mr. Thomas. So, the first one is, uh, for a 60-second pitch, shall I talk about my experience or the business model and financials in detail? How import, how much importance does a financial model play in an ele elevator pitch? Yeah, you'll have to be careful. Again, as I said, if your time is short, you might want to skip whatever I have mentioned uh, towards the bottom side, but cover definitely cover the thing that I have uh, mentioned at the top. So, for example, if I share my screen and if I go back to this, so you know, you if it's a 60 second, I mean, I, now I'm of course I've come to know of the time. So, if it's a 60 second, maybe you can just stick to the first four or first five. You need not have to go to the below ones because if you start talking about financials in 60 seconds, the, the person, the panelists will be all confused at what are they trying to solve? Because ultimately a pitch is, there is a problem in the world. This is the solution that we have and it's a great business model. So that's that's the overall short pitch that they want. So I hope you have answered your question. So. Yeah, and uh, how, much more, how much importance does a financial model play in elevator pitch? Uh, that's what I said. Be as brief as possible. There is another question before that. I think Anvesh Bhagat has asked how to overcome bias nature in competition. Yeah, yeah I've been just noting down the question in a separate uh, sheet, so I'm just going one by one. Okay, okay. That's how the second is, question. Does the financial model play in an elevator pitch? Uh, not much because you have 60 seconds. Again, as I said, follow this particular order and stick to the uh, top priority ones. Uh, and uh, try to grab the attention of uh, the panelists because if you can, for example, I'll give you a few examples. Just, just I'm just coming up with something. Uh, I, of course, this is I saw a movie sometime recently. So uh, let's say you tell the uh, panelists that um, uh, we have found a solution for hair loss or hair growth or bald head. Okay, uh, this is part of a movie that I saw recently. The moment you tell that, it's a huge problem in the world and you're saying you have a solution and you're saying you've worked, let's say, for six months and we've experimented it on 10 people and eight of them got here. Now, problem and solution. Who do you like to invest in us? That's such a short pitch, but it's a huge, uh, you know, it's covering a big problem, it's giving a huge solution and so they'll, they'll start listening to you. 
so you do so when you're having 60 seconds and you start bringing in a lot of financials and all it might not work well it might not work well yeah got it answered, yeah. and the next question is uh, how to overcome bias nature in competitions as at times the winning team or the best team has a robust business plan but is unlikely to come to reality so how can we make sure that the ideas and plans that are in the real world set a win that of the best hypothetical pitch see i'll i'll tell you something in fact uh, in the past uh, one week uh, i have been listening to a lot of uh, elon musk's uh, videos his interviews and all uh, elon musk uh, elon musk is the guy who uh, he is the founder of tesla and spacex and all that and so the way he is speaking if you have if you don't know who he is watch him on youtube i'm sure all of you know him uh, if you've seen his videos the way he speaks is you know that uh, we should be prepared for mars and we should have a colony there in such a way that uh, even if uh, there are no supplies coming from earth and coming from mars uh, the mars colony should be able to survive by themselves if you start listening to this he is talking literally totally unpractical totally hypothetical but he has been speaking like this for the la- probably last 15 20 years and he's proven over a period of time that uh, the way he speaks uh, or the or the future that he projects uh, becomes a reality why i brought that up here is because uh, see what happens is if you have proven something uh, as i said in this like for example in the list of priority prototype if you have created a prototype and if you have shown some kind of a working model then there are investors who are willing to invest millions and billions of dollars in your plan but if you have if it's completely hypothetical for example in in case of uh, elon musk of course he had the huge wealth he made from paypal so that's the money that he was able to use now um, uh, coming specifically to your question how to overcome bias nature in competitions as at times a winning team or the best team has a robust business plan but it is unlikely to come to reality um see it depends on the panelist it depends on the investor it depends on the risk taking ability of the investor whether they are really thinking too big and they want to really uh, invest on a plan but as i said they are looking at all these factors they are not uh, com- they don't believe that it is completely hypothetical and it may you know not become reality the one of the one of uh, the things that i have been observing uh, and also i've read in places and if you also of course uh, watch videos on youtube when investors make a decision to invest on a particular project most of the time most of the time they are investing in the team or the people they are not investing in the product or services most of the time so what that basically means is the presenting team if they are extremely passionate about whatever they are presenting and they have done a lot of background work and try to create a prototype and it is with that background that they are trying to present that it gains more points okay so how can we make sure that the ideas and plans that are in in real world set a win than that of best hypothetical pitches okay uh, anvesh really uh, um, i hope i am able to give you bits and pieces of your questions i mean your question answers i hope i am able to do that if not maybe you below you can put a specific question uh, from this so that i can answer even more uh, you know specifically to your question so i and i hope that you know this checklist helps you to actually get an answer to your question so if if that's good we'll move to the next one but if you, if you still have please put a specific question below i'll i'll i'd love to answer that i will move on to the next one ha huh. okay even if if own solution already exists in the market can we improve on that upon that solution and innovate according to greater needs if there is a massive uh, improvement yes but if there is a small improvement a small notch of improvement maybe not um, see because if let's say for example mobile apps uh, sorry mobile phones not apps sorry mobile phones so now i think uh, the uh, megapixel has reached like i think 64 or somewhere that kind of megapixels and all have reached in the camera for example now let's say you are creating an innovation and you are saying that you know our megapixel is 90 megapixel and uh, we want investors to put on this 90 megapixel probably they would not be that excited because they know anyway if 
the other existing players have reached 64 uh, megapixel or somewhere around that range it's very easy for them to jump to 90 there's nothing great new thing that you're trying to bring into the whole product or service so um i don't think that would be a good pitch if you are okay. just trying to improve a little bit yeah so can i uh, i would ask this question can i uh, counter this like i i have a follow up question from what you said so uh, we can't improve on the product too much but can we change the business model like if i give an example of flipkart flipkart was a not a new kind of thing like it was uh, it, it is amazon of india and similar thing was present in america also and the product was same in india but it was just a change in the business model and change in the target audience and it made it it, it happened in a it happened to be a huge success in india so in a similar way it it is not necessary that always the product needs to be uh, improved or it needs to be better but we can change the business model or the target audience or anything else like that yeah see uh, the first thing is you said that they have changed the business model to be honest i have not studied what is the change that they have brought in so i i probably do not have the knowledge to bring in uh, flipkart as an example uh, but again uh, the success of flipkart was the team uh, who was behind flipkart Uh, there are few other stories which did not work in india i mean i i am not sure if they if it, if it was really successful or not for example snap deal uh, i don't see much of snap deal happening these days so uh, if the team is fabulous and uh, they are pretty aggressive with what they want to do uh, and then they are able to find uh, investors yes it can work uh, and what happens is um, Uh, usually in the market uh, you know if, if if you study mba you know they say that uh, there are two or three big players usually in the market so if there's only one big player in the market and there's nobody else then probably you can make a pitch as you said with a small alternate in the business plan but let, let me be honest with you um, again the investors are uh, they are looking at these criteria they're looking at okay what is the market size that is where the uh, you know the financials and all come into play there okay this is the market size the large player is having only 50% of the market size so let us bring let us become the second player because there's no one else and capture the next 50% if that is the scenario maybe yes i hope i answered your question all right let's go on to the next question yeah. will including a balance sheet for a future date be practical or is it better to just state figures in an excel table 60 second uh if you can mesmerize the panelists by creating a presentation a powerpoint presentation with all the slides with the problem with the solution and uh, the balance sheet and everything if you can put there and if you can really energetically put it as a story for example now even okay i don't know how many of you have watched uh, shark tank i think you should watch uh, shark tank and uh, probably get more inputs from there Uh, more than what probably i can give though i have done pitch and presentation and also won an award but uh, there they give you uh, you know they give you, you can also get examples so if you see you know you can tell it as a story you know tell the problem tell the solution that this is the prototype this is the financials everything if you can squeeze in in 60 seconds amazing please do it it will definitely gain you more points yeah awesome Uh, the next one is can you tell us what should be in a scalability slide any kind of an example okay so when i was telling all these points again as i said uh, i'm not expecting you to make slides of each of them but of course i leave that to you um, see scalability uh, uh, the concept is what happens is like uh, when you have a product or a service the investor is interested to find out let's say you are saying that you know i would i will create 1000 of the product every month for example some product or service that you have in mind 1000 every month and you are requesting the investor to give you like let's say 1 crore of rupees or something you want him to invest on uh, some amount the investor is also thinking hey this this business model seems to be good and uh, they have right now the plan of doing 1000 per month but it seems to be scalable i think i can make it 1 lakh per month or 1 crore per month maybe i can open branches in other countries also so the investor start think uh, starts thinking like that so 
in this, if you are talking about having a slide of scalability, the, what you can tell us uh, that this is a global concept. That's why I put the globe uh, image there. It's a global concept. So if it, uh, I, that you are confident that it will succeed in India because there is a, uh, a, a you know a problem and the solution is this, and I'm sure it can be replicated all around the world. It's a it's a global phenomenon. So that kind of message can be put on the scalability slide, or that should be there in your entire uh, pitch. So, right. Yeah. Got it. Um, the next one, can you please uh, repeat the third point of the slide? How experience plays in, plays a role in the pitch? If we have less experience, then how do we persuade panelists or investors? Yeah. See, um, it, when the uh, investors are listening to you or the panelists are listening to you, uh, they are trying to see whether you really understand what you're speaking, whether you have good depth of knowledge in what you're speaking or are you just you know uh, pretending or are you just uh, you just read somewhere a little bit copied from somewhere and you're trying to make it and they'll find out they, they can they can hear to you they will know what, what you're speaking so if you have less experience the best thing that you can do is spend uh, almost all your uh, you know waking up time whatever time you have other than your studies and all that to pick up material and start reading about that similar field. For example, if you have an IT solution, start reading about every single IT solution that you know, uh, divide among your team members, make presentations between each other, and uh, increase your depth of knowledge uh, with respect to that particular field as much as possible. Reading, um, um, you need not be actual, ex, uh, you know, uh, working experience. Obviously, uh, we cannot expect uh, you know, many of you to have working experience in those fields. I'm talking about knowledge levels also. How how much of depth of knowledge do you have? So please read as much as possible. Uh, there are a lot of books available. You can uh, download them from even PDF drive. You can probably uh, check the internet and get as much uh, material and just start reading and making presentations. That uh, awareness itself will reveal to the uh, uh, to the panelists that hey, these guys really know what they're speaking. And your, your, your entire voice itself will change. So your confidence itself will be different. Yeah. Great. Uh, the next one is if I have an idea and I'm using this competition as a platform to note the responses on how should I go about it. So basically, uh, he has an idea and he's just using this competition as a platform to note the responses. So yeah. he doesn't have any financial statements or experience regarding the service that he will be proposing. Above. Is it okay or should I go to uh, the which ones? Uh, uh, it says here should we make a video of ourselves explaining it or can it be like a presentation? Okay, okay, I think I missed that. Yeah, yeah, see, yeah. Uh, um, I have a question now. This particular event is um, is it going to be uh, completely virtual or is it going to be uh, any stage or anything is going to be there? It's, it's completely, is it completely virtual? Yes, sir, it's completely virtual. Okay. Uh, I would say that uh, you make the presentation. Don't make a video because it will be more lively and the, uh, uh, the panelists will really enjoy seeing uh, team members passionate and enthusiastically presenting right there on a Zoom platform or something. So I would strongly recommend to make a presentation and not a video. Um, that's, that's my feeling. That's my personal feeling because... Uh, uh, as I said, one of the important elements is team or you can even probably club, but 60 seconds is very tricky. So, you know, you will you, have to see how to do it. And another thing that can happen in Zoom uh, platform is tech, uh, technology issues. If you like, for example, when you share a video and if the audio doesn't go properly and if you are, uh, if the panelists, you get only 60 seconds and if there's some technical glitch, then you can have problems. So I would say presentation. So I think you should do a mock presentation at least some 20, 30 times, practice it multiple times in two different places with you know, Zoom and all that, different people giving you feedback. I think that is the best thing to go do, that according to me. Yeah. Next one is, I think there's another question which says, please release the third, sorry, release the third point of the slide. How experienced... So that's, I think that's... That's done. Yeah, that's done. Okay. That's, that's what we covered. Yeah. I think we'll go to that... Uh, 
the, the idea. idea. Yeah. If if I have an idea and I am using this competition as a platform to note the response, uh, how should I go about it? I don't have the financial statements or experience regarding the service that I uh, will be proposing. See, uh, as I said, if, uh, basically what you're saying is you have an idea and I would say, uh, yes, that, you know, these are the checklists. Now, to be very honest, I don't know whether the panelists would give you a feedback. I'm not sure if that is part of the program. Uh, so if I were to give you a feedback and you only have an idea, so basically what you're saying is you have a solution, but if it's not solving a problem or rest of the things are not there, the idea might be excellent. Okay, the idea might be fabulous, but whether you will find investors is a question mark. Okay, so the panelists, uh, if there's a feedback, of course, they may give you a feedback as to what they think about it. But uh, I, I'm really not sure uh, uh, how else I can answer this. If I have an idea, I'm using this competition as a platform to note response. So if they give you a response, okay, yeah, you can you can make a note of it, yeah. But what matters in a pitch is you have to have all these elements so that they can give you more points. Great. Yeah. The next one is, uh, what are the most common questions investor may ask after your presentation? What are the most common questions they may ask? Uh, one of the questions that they asked us when we made a presentation, of course, our presentation was much longer is a business plan presentation. So we were asked, uh, we gave financial projections uh, in which the uh, uh, the interest rate of loans that we had kept was very high. So the one of the questions they asked is, why are you keeping the interest rate so high? So the we were very confident. So we answered saying that even if the interest rates are so high, we, are, we will succeed. So that was one of the things that they asked us. And um, apart from that, um, uh, they ask questions like, you know, can you show us a working model, uh, or uh, how many um, uh, how many samples sample data do you have? What I mean by sample data is, if you are basically having a software product or a uh, some kind of a service, they would like to see like how many people have used it and what is their feedback, or uh, have you really sold this before, or. Um, these, these could be the questions or, or can you really tell what is the problem that is that you're trying to solve? If you are not clear with the problem statement, they can even ask you questions like what is the problem that you're trying to solve? Or uh, they can even ask you questions like who do you think your, uh, your market is? Like is it young uh, uh, younger generation or older generation? Do you have a clarity of that? Uh, they may even ask you, like, you know, how did this thought come to you? Anything. They can ask anything here. So, that's what, yeah. Right. Um, the next one is how to lay projections if the startup is still in an ideation stage. Uh, see, uh, there are different kinds of investors that are there. Uh, you have seed investors. You have angel investors. You have venture capitalists. So, if you uh, have an out-of-the-world idea and if you have a huge background about that, for example, let's say you are a, a nuclear scientist, okay, a nuclear scientist who had some 25 years of experience in that particular field and one fine day you have an idea that I can do something in this nuclear energy technology or something. And then that's a completely new idea, but you have a huge background behind you in that field and you're going and speaking to an investor uh, saying that I've got an idea. And when that person looks at you and knows that you've got 20 years or 25 years of experience in that field and then with that authority you're saying I've got an idea, those investors are also called seed investors. That is absolutely it's in an idea stage. There is no prototype. There is nothing there, but the person who's coming with the idea wants money to do it. So they start looking at your background. They start looking at your experience. So if you say here, um, if it is still in an ideation stage, then uh, it might not help uh, with your background or your experience in a in a pitching comp elevator pitching competition. It might not help much. Um, so I, I hope I have, I have 
answer that question. Right. Um, the next one is uh, Rohan. Just a minute. Uh, yeah. Can I make a clarification? Sure, yeah. Sure, please. Yeah. Uh, Sir, like uh, the round two for, is for the elevator pitch and participants are required to submit a video and that can include creatives, that can include slides, that can include even the video of you yourself pitching it to the investors. And uh, one more good news is that for the finals, we have got, an, we have got a venture capitalist mainly into early tech investments. So uh, do give your best for this round. Clarifying one more thing, uh, the minimum duration of the elevator pitch is one minute and maximum is two minutes. So uh, I think sir can also give you some tips regarding that. Minimum is one minute and maximum is two minutes. The format should be a video, but it can include creatives as well. Thank you. Oh, amazing. So that, that means it, it actually answers one of the questions precisely saying that a video, uh, should we make a video? Then I think you should make, make a video only. So yeah, so it answers that. And it's good that... Uh, Early um, technology ideas also uh, should be given weightage. Yeah, good. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Sankal, for clarifying that. Um, so, do we go to next question? Yeah, sure. Uh, so, basically, the next question is about this idea is not available in India. It's available in the West. Yeah. And the pa panelists ask about how practically can it be done in India. So, how do we answer this? Yeah. So, in, in, say, to be honest, actually, what I have been observing is uh, that this is actually an amazing uh, business uh, model to uh, adopt and uh, to to actually succeed. Uh, you know, if you're trying to copy a business model which is already existing in a developed country and it is yet to come into India, and bringing it to India in a in a time where the uh, Indian market is also maturing is actually a business model that. Uh, works most of the time and it succeeds most of the time. Uh, many of the businesses that come in India are something that have been successful in the US or UK in, in a few of the developed countries and they bring it to India and uh, uh, they do succeed. Uh, the practicality part, uh, one thing that's happening nowadays that if you have a business model like this, which is there in the US but not there in, the, uh, not there in India, the gap is reducing, uh, you know, that is the, uh, nowadays what, what we see is whatever is getting launched in US, the business models and all that is also coming to India quite fast. The, the gap is, uh, you know, reducing a lot, the time gap of launch and all. So I personally, uh, until and unless it's a very, very, uh, you know, uh, unique or a very um, niche product, which only certain US clients require. For example, I'll tell you, like today I was watching a video about um, there is a Mars community or a Mars colony community. It's a YouTube channel that is there where Elon Musk was making a presentation. So that community, um, the, uh, there, was, there was a huge participation in it. Now, the, that community basically focuses on who will be the people who will go to Mars and colonize first or the people who are interested to go to Mars and get colonized first. Now that market might not be mature in India or the kind of buyers for that kind of flying to Mars and setting a colony there might not be much. So this is a product that probably is getting developed in the developed countries like in US and all that. And we may not be able to bring it to India all of a sudden. So you will have to see how niche, how unique that pro product is and uh, uh, decide on that. But if it's a small difference that it's already there in the US and it's a small difference of what's there in India, then I don't think the panelists will even ask you that, you know, uh, how uh, practical it is because that model actually is working. Something that's there in the US, bring it to India and then ensure that it matures in India also. It, it works actually. It's a good model to have. Yeah. Great. So uh, I think uh, Thomas will take uh, two to three more questions. Sure. Uh, and then we'll probably close it. So we'll go to the next one. In our case, target customer is research community. So how can we make the problem statement more appealing to the investors from a non-scientific background? Uh, see, uh, one more thing that I have observed is that um, depending on the investor, uh, few of the investors like Take Shark Tank itself, for example, or the two of the uh, 
Mayfield and Matrix Invention Capitalist Fund that approached us also. They try to approach, uh, or they are they are usually interested by those business plans or by those ideas where they also have a little bit of an exposure. Okay, um, so when you are trying to make a pitch, uh, which is uh, very uh, you know. Uh, as you said, it is meant for the research community to a non-research background. They may not be able to connect much. Okay, that's the first thing. Second thing is, uh, if you are having panelists for um, you know judging pitch, and if you have a venture capitalist fund, I, I think you really need not have to worry much about whether uh, they will have the background or they will not have the background, as long as you're able to clearly give these details to them. Okay, if you're able to tell the problem, if you're able to tell the solution, all these things, I, I don't think you really need to be worried about whether they would have a scientific or a non-scientific background. So that's my answer for that. Great. Uh, so I think we'll uh, we'll I think Rahul Pandey has has many follow-up questions. So even about the product uh, we talked about in the West. So even if it's a niche product, how to make it practical in India? Is there any suggestion or advice on it? No, see, you, it will be very difficult to succeed if the market does not mature. Uh, so if you bring in a product where there are very few takers uh, in the market, then uh, obviously their buyers will be low, the revenue will be low, the costs would be there, so the business would not survive. So if it's a very niche product and the market has not matured, then the investors would not be interested in. So it, it, it can fail. It can fail. Right. Right. So, um, so I'll take one last question. Post which, if there are any questions, uh, team, you can either mail us or you can visit www.qfirst.com to arrange a one-on-one -on -one, uh, personalized session with Mr. Thomas. So, one last question from Alan Sebastian. I have an amazing invention and have a solid physics background. I'm currently working on my prototype uh, to make a to make a proof of concept. I require a lab and funding. So, my question is, my mentor advice advised against finding investors in the current stage. I really want to start up with my product. So any advice on it? Uh, so basically what you're saying is that you want to start up with your product, but you don't have the money to do it. Is that what you're saying? I yeah, think. I think so. He, he basically needs a lab for a lab and a funding to start off his prototype. Okay. And this mentors has advised him against finding investors at the current stage. So is there any advice to it? It might be, I mean, he himself said it's a, it's a little vague, but uh, uh, let's see if we can find some kind of an advice to it. Okay. Uh, so my question is, again, once again, I'm just reading the same thing. I really want to start with the product. So, uh, I don't know if but I really hope to get an answer to it. See, uh, you believe that it is amazing. Um, uh, now you will have to be clear uh, that the market also believes that it is amazing. And uh, uh, usually what happens is when we take a product or a service to the market, there, there might not be any takers for it. So it is essential to have a prototype and to, uh, you know, to be able to uh, test the product in the market. Uh, it, it, is, it is quite essential. Now, when you say amazing, what kind of a problem is it really solving and what kind of a, a solution do you have when you say amazing uh, for what problem is that problem very clear um, and uh, if you are saying you want a lab and you want to make the prototype and uh, see if it, it depends on how the uh, see for example let us say okay now I'll, I'll give you one I'm not sure if this might answer your question or not so um, Alan, let us say that you are uh, so passionate about this particular uh, uh, this particular um, uh, concept that you you have a very high grade or in physics and you are uh, you've done a lot of presentations in this particular product and uh, you have really uh, carved a niche out of yourself as a your own brand like Alan Sebastian. Is a uh, uh, is a geek in physics, and uh, he can, he has already created small small projects out of this. Or uh, the, the, everybody uh, I 
identifies you as a person who is capable of doing something okay now let's say that's the kind of background you have and with that kind of a background if you are presenting this to somebody and of course you are saying that your mentors have told I, i'm not not going with what your mentors have told i'm just talking about whether somebody will fund you and give you a lab so if you are a, a, a you know somebody who has extremely good background about this uh, very strong and then if you present this idea to somebody they may say okay probably i'll fund let's let's see if you can make that sort of seed investment let's see that you, you how you can make a prototype because again if the problem that you're trying to solve has to be massive okay so if that problem that you're trying to solve and you have amazing uh, knowledge about it and you're able to create then a seed investor can give you the fund uh, you can google it and you can check who are the seed investors now and i don't know why the mentors have advised um, current i don't know what uh, what is the current stage uh, i don't know what is the concern as as you said rightly it is vague um, but pursue your dreams and remember that it is a the ultimately if it's a solving a problem it will work if you are not solving any problem it will not work no matter how great the uh, solution is if you are not solving a problem it will not work so that's it great great uh, thank you thank you so much uh, mr thomas if there are any other questions uh, i would suggest you to please email email to us or Uh, you can probably visit www.qfirst.com to have a one-on-one -on -one personalized session with uh, Mr. Thomas. I'll hand it over to Arvind of Sankal team to give the word of thanks. Thank you, thank you, Rohan. Uh, first of all, uh, before going into the word of thanks, I would like to acknowledge Qfirst as our knowledge partner for Nisadia. Nisadia is an annual bee fest of uh, Department of Management Studies, NIT Ruchi, and Qfirst is a digital mentorship platform with a community of certified experts. who can guide individuals in the journey of exploration qfirst also offers a complete set of tools such as hosting skill or knowledge based workshops and coaching to enhance the skills of individuals you can check out qfirst.com for more details and the current workshop is about sankalp and sankalp is a flagship event of nisadia is the annual entrepreneurship event of as part of nisadia so and this time for this edition we have prizes worth rupees 55500 at stake the top 3 teams also gets premium mentorship package worth rupees 7500 along with the cash prize offered by qfirst you can log in to read to see there to compete platform for making the subsequent round submissions and i would like to thank mr thomas john founder and ceo of resola it services for taking his valuable time to schedule a uh, schedule a webinar uh, on this weekend thank you so much sir uh, and also i would like to take this yeah, opportunity thank you, thank you sir thank you Thanks. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank QFS for organizing uh, this webinar exclusively for the round two participants of Sankal. I would thank also you like so much, uh, Arvind. Thank you, Sankal team, for the wonderful opportunity and collaboration. I would also like to thank all the participants for joining in. We, the organizing team of Sankal, along with QFS, QFS wishes everyone all the very best for the competition. Thank you so much. All the best, guys. Thank, thank you. Thank you and all the best. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you for your time. Thank you for the wonderful session. Thank you.